So for um, for number 10, we are trying to see which of the following are true in the universe of real numbers. So A, we have that for every x, there exists y such that um, x plus y is equal to 0. Um, so we're saying for, for every single x, we can find a y, right? And that is true because what, what we have here is that if we bring the y to the other side, is equal to minus y. And we can find that in the universe of real numbers. So this is definitely true. Um, for b, we're saying there exists an x such that for every y, x plus y is equal to 0. Now, the order here really matters because we're saying there exists a sing an x, and this x, it has to work for all y, right? Um, so once more, when we bring this x, the y to the other side, we're saying that x, x is equal to negative y. But there can't be a single x that works for all y, right? Because if y is equal to, say, negative 2, then um, if y is equal to 2, right, then negative 2, x would have been equal to negative 2. If y is equal to 3, so we're going to have uh, minus 3, and then clearly the only thing that would be equal would be minus 3, and so on. So we could see that we there's not an x that would work for every y, right? That's just impossible. So this is false. Um, for c, we're saying that there exists an x, and there exists a y such that x squared plus y squared is equal to negative 1. Now, this is not possible in the universe of the reals because every real number when squared is going to be positive. So when you have the sum of two, uh, two squares, two positives, that can't give you a negative, right? The only way that it could give you a negative is if you are in the complex number. So false. And here for d, we're saying that um, for every x... If x is positive, then it means that there exists a y such that y is negative and xy is positive. So if x is positive um, and xy is positive, right, then that means that necessarily y must be positive because the only way for the multiplication of a positive and another number to give you positive is if y is positive. So this implied that y necessarily is positive. So it is impossible for us to have a y that would be negative and then when multiplied by a positive number would also give us pos uh, positive. So that is false. Um, for e, we have that um, for every y, there exists an x such that for every z, xy is equal to xz. So basically here we're saying that um, we're saying that for every y and every z, we can find a number x such that xy is equal to xz. And that is true because there is a single number that will make every single y, there will, there's a single x that will make every possible y be equal to every possible z, and that is zero, right? So zero y is equal to zero z. Um, is always true no matter what the value the value of y or z are true for every possible case. Um, so this one is true because zero is a solution. And for f, we're saying that there exists an x such that for every y, x is less than or equal to y. So we're basically saying, hey, there exists a single x that is smaller than or equal to every every y. Um, and because we're saying that this single x is less than or equal to every y, what this implies is that there's a single x that is the smallest real number, right? Because it's smaller than every other real number. And that's not true because the real numbers, um, they exist on an infinite continuum, right? So here we have the real numbers, and it goes from 0 all the way to positive infinity and negative inf infinity. So you can't find a single x that is um, less than every other number, right? So this is, this is false. Uh, for g, we're saying that for all y, so for all numbers, you can find a number that is less than 
right? So that is true. If you take any possible real number, so maybe you can take negative two, uh, maybe you can take a million, right? A million. Uh, maybe you can take uh, root two. For all of these, you could always find a number that is less than it, right? Uh, because that number doesn't have to work for everyone. We're just saying that for every possible number, you can find one. So this one is true. Um, what about H? For H, we're saying that there exists a unique Y such that Y is less than zero and Y plus three is greater than zero. So there's, there's only a single solution in the real numbers such that this is true, right? Um, so when we put this in interval notation, let's bring the three to the other side. So we have Y is greater than negative three. So we're saying, hey, uh, zero is bigger than y, right? So y is less than zero, and then y is bigger than negative three. So we can clearly see that there's not a single solution, right? Because negative two is a solution, negative one is a solution. Um, so the existential is true when the truth set has a single element, and because we have more than one element, this is false. Um, and then for I, we are saying that um, there exists a unique X that works for every Y such that X is equal to Y squared. Um, so a single X that must be equal to every real number squared. And that's not true, right? Because, you know, one squared is equal to one, two squared is equal to four and so on. So we can clearly see that, you know, there's not a, si a single unique X that works for all of them. That single unique has to work for every single possible case because the existential comes first. So this one is false. Um, but when we reverse the order, we're saying that for all, all real numbers, um, you can always find an X that is equal to their square, right? So for every number, every real number that I could find, maybe minus five, maybe two, maybe a thousand, I don't know. We're always saying, hey, there's always a single unique number that is equal to this, right? Um, that is equal to the square. Sorry, when I square this. And the reason that there's a unique number is because the squares, they make it positive, right? So always a unique number. So this one is true. We can always find. And for K, we have that um, there exists a unique X and a unique Y that has to work for every, every W, right? So for every W, W squared is bigger than X minus Y. Um, but that's not true because W squared, if I, if I make X, um, if I make this result negative, right? So maybe I do one, um, one minus three, or maybe I do 10, um, 10 minus 18, you know, all these cases will give me negative, right? So W squared is clearly bigger than negative two, no matter the value of W, um, W squared will always be bigger than uh, minus eight. So there's not, there's not a unique X and Y. We can find infinite X and Ys that would make this true. So this is false. Um, so let me just zoom out for you guys to see everything. And that is it for problem 10.